Now the purpose of this video is to show you how to create a tempo map in Reaper, which means winding up our grid with the music that's already recorded. And in most situations, it wasn't recorded to a click. I have a project set up here. Let's see what it sounds like now. So I want to add some percussion loops or MIDI to this, and it needs to be in time or fall on the grid. So instead of quantizing the performance, we'll put the performance right on the grid, or create a grid around the performance. So I'm going to start off by zooming in to the front to see how the song starts. If it starts at the beginning of a bar, and it does. I'm going to select all the items in the project and line it up on a bar. I'm going to turn on snapping in my grid and let's drag it to bar three. So it starts right on that grid line. So now we have a starting point. So let's put a tempo marker right here. Go to bar three, type shift C, and that creates a tempo marker right there. We're not going to change the tempo. We just want to use a tempo marker. So here's that tempo marker. So now we're going to count from here about four bars in, which is pretty much where the drums start playing. Let's count along. So right here should be bar seven, as we count four bars from three to seven. So I'm gonna put another tempo marker right on bar seven, shift C, Again, we're not going to change the tempo. We just want to create a tempo marker. Hit OK. Now we're going to move this marker to be where the drums start. And we can do this by holding down a modifier. Control on the PC, Command on the Mac. But if we do that and drag this tempo marker, it's going to stretch our audio. And we don't want to do that. We just want to move the grid lines and keep the audio in place. So I'm going to go down here to my transport and right click. And make sure the time base is not set to beats, but time. So now, if we do the same thing, move our tempo marker while holding down control on the PC, command on the Mac, it's just gonna move our grid lines. The audio won't be stretched. So again, we're gonna put it right on this downbeat. Let's zoom in and put it right on this kick. So now, our first four bars should be good. And we can check that out by turning on the metronome. So let's start our song with this tempo. Let's double click it and copy it. And let's delete all these tempo markers, Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, so we can start over. I'm going to paste that tempo into our transport. This way, the beginning of our song or our count off will start off at the right tempo. But now the guitar comes in too early. So let's move it back to bar three. Again, we're going to select all the items in our project and then drag it over so it starts right on bar three. Now our count off should be perfect. And then it's gonna go off over time. So now let's add a tempo marker at bar three. Again, 
We're just going to leave it and insert that tempo marker. But now we're going to run an action. Now to run this action, we need to have installed the SWS extensions. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But once they're installed and you reopen Reaper, it should have this action. Hit question mark to open our actions. And we'll type in the filter, create tempo. And there's an action right here to create tempo markers at grid after the selected tempo marker. So before we run this, we need to select this tempo marker. And to see it, we'll go to view, master track. We should see the tempo envelope right here. Make sure we select this point that we can close our master track as this point is already selected. Go to our action list again, and we'll run this action to create tempo markers at grid after the selected tempo marker. We'll still click this, and we'll see it created tempo markers at every bar. That's because our grid, if we right click over here, is set up to one whole note. If you wanted a different length, maybe two or four bars, or even quicker, you would change this before you ran that action. But we set it up for one full bar, so we're gonna have a different tempo marker at every bar, which you can adjust on the fly to have our grid line up with our audio. Now we don't need these three over here, so delete them and make sure this one lines up. And again, if we hold down Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, it's gonna adjust this tempo marker along with the others in the future, like this. So you can zoom in really close, put it right on that kick. Now we know that the first four bars should be perfect. And we can readjust it on the fly, going from bar to bar. But to do this quicker, I came up with a few different changes. If we go to our preferences, control P on the PC, command comma on the Mac, we could scroll down under editing behavior and choose the mouse modifiers. If you go to the context, project tempo, time signature marker, and left drag, this is the behavior we've been using. Holding down control on the PC, command of the Mac, and moving our tempo marker as it adjusts the previous tempo. But to make this quicker, let's change the default action to have this behavior. This way we don't have to hold down a modifier at all. We can always switch this back later. But this is gonna make it a lot quicker. Just change it here, hit OK. Now we can do the same thing without holding down the modifier. Just grab it and it adjusts this tempo marker along with the ones that come after it. Let's zoom in and put it right on the kick. And to do this quicker, instead of zooming out and zooming in on each marker, we could use keyboard shortcuts. And I'm gonna use the arrow keys. So let's go back to our actions. Let's type into the filter, view, colon, move cursor. And down over here are some actions for moving our cursor forward or backwards. By default, the right arrow moves it one pixel, but let's move it one grid division instead. Again, you could put it back after this, but this will be a lot quicker if we change it for now. Let's make this the right arrow, and we'll make this one the left arrow. So now, if we hit the right arrow, it moves one bar forward, right on the next tempo marker. We'll go back with the left arrow, so we can jump through our project much quicker, and zoom in and adjust our tempo markers. So our first one is perfect, hit the right arrow to go to the next one, and just grab it without a modifier, and put it right on a transient. And just go through the whole song, doing it this way. And I like to challenge myself to do the whole song in real time. So let's play it from the beginning and see if we could do it that quickly. Stretching
we did it with some time to spare. And to check it over afterwards, we could zoom in on the first one and just hit the right arrow to double check our work. And go as fast as you want. We even hold it down to quickly see how accurate we did this. And we can see they all look pretty good. Go back to the left and see them the same way. And very quickly, make sure it's perfect. And we can tell it was. So now the ultimate test is to drag in some loops. Let's turn off the metronome and instead let's create a new track and drag in some loops. I'm gonna try this shaker, drag it to bar three. Let's duplicate it a few times through the whole song. Let's hear how it sounds in time. As you can tell, it sounds perfect with all our loops perfectly on the grid because our music is perfectly on the grid. By creating all these tempo markers, one per bar, or again, you could set it to be every four bars or two bars or tighter with eighth notes or quarter notes. But in most situations, we can get away with whole notes or even less. But with the music perfectly on the grid, we could line things up or add new tracks or loops or programming or MIDI, and it's all going to lock perfectly with the original song's tempo without affecting the original performance. So that's pretty much it. That's creating a tempo map in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. It's Reaper Mania.
go.